so I kind of bought the power by the hour dyno. <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? It's Alex. And yes, this is now mine. Now before you guys have a bunch of questions, I will answer all of the, I'm sure, uh, questions that are gonna come up on the comments and people are gonna ask Lund Racing about this dyno, but I'll answer all of those questions at the end of the video. If you want questions answered, fast forward to the end of the video and I'm gonna answer all of the questions that I'm sure everyone's gonna ask about the dyno that used to be Power by the Hours dyno, and I went ahead and cut a deal with Jake and went ahead and purchased it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of show you the dyno, um, show you the things that need upgrading, show you the condition it's currently in, and then maybe in a future video, once put some paint on it, you know, put a little spit on it, shine it up a little bit, make it look real good. But more importantly, I'll show you the upgrade to the software that we did to it to make it more consistent and better reading. But for now, let's just gotta give you the whole rundown of the whole dyno and let you know what the future plans are for the channel and for the dyno. Okay, if you're a follower of my channel, you have come to know and love this dyno right here for many, many pulls that I have done on it from the Fairmont to the red car to the white car and many others f-150s etc now for a very long time going on over a year now power by the hour stopped working on vehicles meaning they literally just stopped working on cars they changed direction as to how the business is going to operate so this guy was sort of just sitting outside collecting dust and i kind of had talks with jake about it and he would say well you could buy it or you could buy it and i'm like yeah yeah whatever i didn't think i could afford it but we had a very serious conversation after talks broke down with buildings that I wanted to rent out. And he's like, Alex, you don't even have to move the dyno. You can access it here. He's like, you pay me what we agree on and that'll give you access not only to the dyno, but the outside. I'm not accessing the shop that is 100% locked down. The dyno is the only thing I have access to. At the time, the dyno didn't work that well because the stack, was bad the stack is what is responsible yes we're flying in and out of the airport now the stack is what is responsible for all of the electronics of the dyno and jake upgraded to the software and the hardware to the latest stuff um if a lot of you know what this is if you saw his old button it was just a single button on off and it actually activated the brake also that stack always had issues. So he went ahead and upgraded to the latest stuff that auto updates over the air, has Wi-Fi capabilities. You can connect to your computer via Wi-Fi so you don't have to have wires going in and out of everywhere. The only wire you really need is this guy right here, the atmospheric sensor. Basically, this is how it gets its weather data. This I'm gonna eventually probably place somewhere outside. I believe it has a magnet or something like that and it has a little fan inside. Basically, it gives you your temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, the whole nine yards. So this is the latest and greatest stuff right here that Jake went ahead and upgraded to. Part of the deal was, Alex, you install that, you install that, you make it work, and then we'll talk about price. So I came in here after work one day, installed the sensor. Now, if you guys don't know how these dynos operate, it's basically roll speed and a RPM signal that comes to the engine off of that, so RPM, versus roll speed that that is a brand new sensor that i had to install in there it was actually very straightforward very easy and i had to crimp and install these wires on this guy to be able to connect it to the stack so new sensor new wiring new stack and it was up and running and i installed the software on the computer and everything was working great so let me just kind of take you <laughs> over the overall condition of the dyno see show you what it looks like see what it needs upgrading right now it works fine it works honky dory so it doesn't really need anything but eventually it's going to need some upgrades first of all i'm probably going to buy a set of race ramps um this wood deal here is kind of pretty good but cars that are really low like the white car and the gt500 i guarantee are going to rub whether when, once you start backing it into the dyno so i'm going to buy myself a set of race ramps to extend this out here so it's a more gradual pitch up to the back of the dyno so i got to get a couple of those guys the nice thing about this dyno it's it's adjustable in terms of wheel width it's adjustable it moves back and forth on these slots and it also moves back and forth on the slots up here 
So <laughs> this is what's basically covering up the roller trailer tires. Since it is outside, and you can see it's it's little surface rust. So that obviously the more you use it, the less that'll become an issue. But obviously I have to knock off some of the rust and probably give it a brand new fresh coat of paint. As I said before, this guy also slides on this guy. So you can put pretty wide things up there. Actually, obviously the widest vehicle you can put on here is determined by the drum. This technically is a mobile dyno, right? It has a setup that you can put trailer tires on it and tow it and tow it anywhere. It is basically a mobile dyno. It's not something that you lag down uh, permanently. You can just kind of see that he has lag bolt there. You can undo those, lift it up, get wheels and tires on it, which these guys are, and you can literally bring it anywhere you want. Like a mobile dyno, like when I used to work for VMP, they had a mobile dyno, but it was obviously in a trailer this is mobile and you just kind of set up the ramps and go from there the problem with that is finding a nice flat ground finding people that allow you to put uh the dyno up somewhere is difficult okay so the overall condition of the dyno the structure it's pretty good you know there there are no cracks there are no areas of major concern this is where you would tie down the back of the car like on an axle the car is all the way up to here you basically ratchet these down with ratchet straps i'm obviously going to have to upgrade ratchet straps but these are the ones that go over the axle right here obviously this structure is so that noise and particulates like i was saying <laughs> the other battery started to get hot so this is basically to prevent noise from the cars to go to the airport because look uh, at the end of the day even though it's an airport, you obviously just can't bullhorn your way into, into noise and you don't want to get anyone mad, even though they just built some brand new, really kind of high-end looking buildings over there where uh, private planes are. I think I'm not going to operate this at night. It's going to be during business hours, mostly on the weekends. So basically that is going to prevent particulates or anything flying off the thing or just noise from kind of going back there. Obviously, I'm going to have to kind of go over the whole thing eventually and give it a nice coat of paint, a look into what, I don't know, POR is kind of the way to go. I really wish I could have a mobile sandblaster come here and sandblast the whole thing. I really liked working with sandblasting. The problem with sandblasting is the moment, the moment you expose metal to humid areas, it has to have a top coat on it. So what I would more than likely do is cover up the rollers, have a mobile sandblaster come in here. Problem is, it's gonna be a lot of sand, so maybe I'll just knock it down with a grinder and do my best to do something quick easy but obviously it needs oh it needs a lot of work yeah it needs <laughs> these are pretty rusty yeah these are supposed to go up all the way and this guy stops right here oh there we go there we go man it need, yeah it needs not only some uh, lube wd-40 what have you it needs some work definitely needs some work but it works it's just has been neglected and just kind of sitting there very very long time so my job is to basically get it looking better, use it often, get you guys content for the channel and do my best to get testing and all that other stuff done, you know, on the channel. But basically now I'm gonna answer all the obvious questions that people are gonna ask about the dyno. Okay, let's get some questions answered. The obvious question is, is Alex gonna tune on his own? Absolutely not. The last thing I wanna do is start a business that's a direct competitor with Lund Racing. That's not only stupid, but that is disloyal. I'm not looking to tune on my own. I'm not looking to do anything on my own. This to me, to me, is a tool. No different than you buying an air compressor, a wrench, a hammer. To me, this is a tool. Not only will the channel benefit, but I'll benefit. I can test combinations on my personal vehicles that we can do the vetting on. If Lund Racing doesn't have access to a Gen 3 manual, I do. If Lund Racing doesn't have access to an F-150, I do. Access to an F-150, access to a Coyote swap vehicle. Luckily, I have a bunch of little flavors for the Coyote market and the GT500 market that I think will be beneficial to test, vet, and you know get some data on and that's kind of the main goal obviously for, for me and the second main goal is to get you guys content 
look, it is no secret that I want this channel to do well, but not only do well, but give you guys information or as much information as possible so that you can make the best informed decision you can on the parts you select. Another question that's gonna come up eventually is, are you gonna allow customers to do dyno pulls on this dyno? Absolutely not. Again, this is my dyno for personal use. This has zero affiliation with Lund Racing. Lund Racing is the company I work for. Lund Racing is the company that I do tuning for. And my cars all have Lund tunes on them. And this is gonna be my equipment. This isn't something that Lund Racing bought for me. This isn't something that Lund Racing has access to unless they come here. If they wanna come here, and of course I'll let them come here and do stuff. But if you're a Lund Racing customer, and you think, well, I can make pulls on Alex's dyno. Sorry, that's not the case. This is literally personal equipment to do the vetting and testing on my personal vehicles. That's literally the reason I bought this dyno. I was looking for buildings for a very long time. People kept digging me around. And I thought, you know what, instead of spending the money on a down payment on a building or a first, last, and security deposit, it'll go a long way towards the purchase of the dyno. Once Jake gave me the price, I said, that's very doable. So we struck a deal. And I bought the dyno. If you are a Lund Racing dealer and you just happen to be in Florida, you do not have access to my dyno. You don't ask me if you can get your car on the dyno. Don't think that you can get your car on the dyno, regardless of your affiliation with Lund Racing. What's going to happen is this, guys, bet me on this. This is going to happen. What the fuck? Alex has a dyno, he works for Lund, and we're dealers or we're boys, or I know John Sr. personally, how come he doesn't let me use the dyno? That's bullshit. That's gonna happen, and I guarantee someone's gonna complain to Lund Racing that I don't allow anybody on this dyno except my friends or my personal vehicles. Plain and simple. The other thing that's gonna happen is, all of a sudden, people that I don't talk to on a regular basis that want access to the dyno are gonna hit me up. And I'm not saying this to be a dick, but if you weren't messaging me before I had a dyno, don't message me after I had a dyno. No offense. I understand there's a lot of Johnny come lately's out there and they want access. Oh, but you know, but you know, but you know. Now that it is operational, something that Jake and I struck a deal with, it belongs to me. Jake is very nice to allow me to use his facility to operate my dyno in. And I'm sure there'll be some compensation for that. That's not a problem. It's like as if I'm renting out this pad from Jake, basically. So that does not give, if you know Jake, if you know anyone at Power by the Hour or Lund Racing, you should not ask them anything about this dyno. It is no different than you asking anyone else about an air compressor that I have, or wrench that I have, or a screwdriver that I have. This is my tool. I bought it. It is not accessible to anybody that I don't allow it to. So don't think that because you're affiliated with Lund, Jake, or anyone in that group that you have access to this dyno. I know I might sound like a dick right now. I get it. But I know what's going to happen. I know human nature. They're going to think that I owe them access to this dyno. So to recap, no, I'm not tuning on my own. Fuck no. Are you kidding me? Second, no, you don't have access to this dyno. Customers don't have access to this dyno. No, I'm not gonna make dyno pulls on your car because you're my boy. If you're a friend of mine, if you're Jake, if you're Mikey, if you're someone I know and are an actual friend, sure, I might let you play with it. I'll say, hey, let me know when you wanna be down there. I'll bring you the laptop and we're kosher. Things are good. I'm not gonna charge for that or anything like that. But the main reason I got this dyno is to get you guys data on the vehicles I have. Cold air shootouts are gonna happen. Manifold intake shootouts are gonna happen on the F-150, on the S-550 red car, on the 19 manual and on the gt500 and fairmont that's gonna be a whole bunch of fun i got a lot of data that i that i can bring you guys with different parts different manufacturers want to work with me i have access to a dyno i'm going to change blowers i'm going to potentially mess with turbos in the future so i think it's a great thing to have and it opens up a bunch of avenues that i normally wouldn't have if i didn't have this dyno so finally you're gonna ask what's the first car you're gonna put on the dyno well, the Fairmont has been on the dyno, the Fairmont's dialed in, everything's good. The F-150 is probably a good idea, but I haven't tuned it yet, so I don't think it's worth getting on the dyno until I have another N-Gage or an RTD to tune it with. Red car's been on the dyno non-stop, but the only car that I haven't gotten a clean hit on or have seen make a clean hit 
on the dyno is section heat. So this is the first car that's going to be on the dyno. Stay tuned. We're going to get some pulls on this guy. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later, and thank you for the support. Thank <laughs> you.